Oh. Just the process to show. Um, and so sometimes I use the glue and screw method, we call it, but where literally I will use wood glue and then screw into it um, that to make it extra secure. But now I've kind of fooled around with some staples to keep joints together a little bit. So yeah, there's all different ways. And I'm, I'm very much a simplest. Uh, I like to use, or purist is the word. I just have a few hand tools that I work with a drill and a jigsaw for the most part that's and a little sander and that's pretty much it I do a lot of mitering by hand um, not a lot of tools involved with my process right now the piece has to have had a history the, right. or parts of the piece have to have had some history they've had to be, have been something like a boat or a container of some sort or a piece of a house and that that still is retained I mean right. when you see right. it you know oh that must have been a boat so there's this archaeological thing going on too. I feel like I'm I'm kind of resurrecting these past things. It's uh, um, something that has a lot of scratches and peelings and discolorations from washing around in the sea. I'm not going to be able to make that happen. Um, for example, here's a here's interesting. interesting board I just found recently. I mean, this rust pattern. This had to have been on a boat, stuck somewhere, and just mm -hmm. the sea works on it and colors it and scratches it and I want that to be something that I'm going to put in and you're going to recognize it as a piece of something in the past and so it's got a new history it's mm -hmm. kind of continuing the history in, in effect with this new part too. Um, yeah. Anyway I saw a Blanche Lazelle piece in a show we had recently a painting of Blanche mm -hmm. and uh, so this is my three-dimensional version of that painting it was called um, cons abstraction 1929 by Blanche Lizelle. So basically I kind of duplicated her colors that I found. Uh, I made the shapes, you know, this, this curvy shape she, she likes a lot. And she likes these zigzaggy shapes too. So, uh, but I just kind of re remade her piece in I a dimension. I Hoffman's and I tend yeah, to feel yeah, like yeah. Um, my version of Hoffman's there or there on the wall, kind of playing with color planes so that, there, that there's that push-pull that he always uh, tried to achieve where, you know, a color will go back, but it'll come forward where it's next to another color, like the yellow against the blues, popping in and out, the pushing and it, the pulling it, of color. It does look a lot like a Hans Hoffman sort of um, art piece. It's really, you seem to really have a real hooked into what's happening and really working currently in what's happening in the art movement here, really, I think. Artists need to start slowly and, and kind of build into using shapes that are pretty much what they were, you know, where a lot of the boat pieces I find have already been broken up in some form or another, so they're not so precious. A beginning student of art will probably feel like if they found a water ski it's too precious to cut into or break or change so it becomes intimidating so it's better to find old junk that you're not going to worry about you know and uh, just manipulate the old stuff that you're not afraid of I mention is it has to be a lot of fun um, and it is, I mean it's combined everything I love I love to walk I love to find stuff and accumulate. I'm, I'm a, a, a compulsive accumulator, like many of us in the town. But then I, I like to just fiddle. Like it's a big puzzle, I guess is what I'm saying. You know, when I pick this, that, and that, the the pieces of wood are like puzzle pieces. So you just kind of play with them and let them tell you what they want to be.